we go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another day of the 90 Day Ecom Challenge. It's day 46, and this is a live Shopify Q&A session. I uh, hear myself, Peter Sorensen, and we're with the Intramineurs team here at Techademics headquarters. Uh, say hello to the Intramineurs team, and if you guys are coming on live or we'll wait a couple minutes, we got a few of you guys. What's up? All right. So this is going to be a really fun thing. We decided, hey, let's do a live Q&A with, uh, you know, people that, you know, really are here to assist you in our group and in our community. Our entrepreneurs team are people that are working every single day here at the office full time to help you succeed with your Shopify store, help you succeed inside of the 90 day challenge. I want to make sure that we are live, that we're coming up live in the group. Uh, looks like we're good. Okay, cool. So we got some people coming on live. And again, uh, for those of you that are on live, you're going to be able to, answer your, be able to answer some of your questions. So start asking your questions. What questions do you have about Shopify, about product research, about setting up your store? Uh, maybe it's about advertising. Maybe it's just about managing your business, maybe mindset, some things I shared about in day 45. Uh, you know, we have our team here. I'm going to kick it off, and then uh, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Darren, one of my good friends, one of our entrepreneurs. we got Robert here as well, and we'll probably cycle through several entrepreneurs that kind of come in the hot seat to help answer questions for you. So as you have questions, as you're hopping on live here, again, day 46 in our, in, uh, you know, 90-day e-com challenge, and again, this we're in the build grow phase you know so some of you guys are just getting started maybe you hopped on to the challenge late maybe you're still in the building phase maybe some of you guys have been with us since day one and you're in the grow phase uh and maybe you guys are just some of you are even crushing it out you're already scaling your business to ten thousand dollars plus in sales wherever you're at is perfect know that wherever you're at is perfect the key is from where you are to where you want to be, what are you doing? What are you learning? And then what are you taking action on on a daily basis to move your business forward? So we're going to do a live Q&A as well as, a, you know, give the, give the entrepreneurs here freedom to really just train whatever they want to train you as well. Things that they've seen that have been valuable, that have been impactful. They're here at the, uh, the mothership, so to speak, learning on a daily basis. You know, they're, they're getting a crash course, right? Uh, very intense, intense on Shopify, on Facebook advertising. Uh, they're getting to work with one of our instructors, John Alfredson, a lot, and a lot of other top marketers. So, again, hop on, ask your questions. That being said, you know, I'm going to pass it along to Darren. Darren, feel free to uh, kind of get on here and just share with – maybe, you know, start off, Darren, sharing kind of your experience, maybe a little bit on your story, kind of, you know, how you got here, and then we can start dump, jumping in some questions. Um yeah, I, I started an e-com probably a little over a year ago. Um, I've built a couple of stores prior to coming into Techademics and really did a great job building stores but had never gotten any traction with sales and getting those stores off the ground. So had the opportunity to come in here to Techademics and jumped on it. Um, probably the best decision, frankly, that I've ever made, uh, definitely from a business perspective. And within the last, I think we've come just, just surpassed two months here, and have learned probably more in those two months than I think most people would learn in a year. So it's been an incredible experience and um, a hell of a journey, and uh, we still have a long ways to go. So uh, I've learned a lot, started applying a lot of the um, a lot of the strategies and uh, the knowledge that we've gained here, and am now starting to see results um, um, on one particular store that I built before coming here, and then I'm in the process of building a new one. So, uh, so for me, and I think I can speak for for most of the entrepreneurs here, it's been an amazing experience. So. I don't know, Roberto, if you want to jump on maybe and give a little bit of your background, and then we'll start looking for questions. Yeah, hey, thanks, Darren. So I got started here at Techademics uh, after having served um, in the United States Air Force for 24 years. And uh, all along, though, I'd had this entrepreneurial spirit, and it wasn't until I arrived here that I was able to really apply that, namely because I made the decision and had the support of uh, family. So I think uh, as an entrepreneur, having the support of a spouse, a business partner, someone that you um, um, that you live with day to day or that you surround yourself with, to have that support at home first, I think is pretty important. Uh, a lot of times um, folks get involved without that support and maybe they just um, uh, kind of fizzle out. But for me, that's been the real key thing. And then um, probably a very close second, very, very close second is having that platform to um, really fuel that entrepreneur spirit of yours. So that platform here at Techademics uh, right now uh, is Shopify. And I tell you what, uh, I've seen a whole lot of people, including myself, have starting to have that, um, those results that we were looking for all along. And 
Uh, I think real for me and probably for the most of us here by virtue of us actually being on this journey with you just kind of shows that we want to give back. We feel a lot of satisfaction in giving back to the community. So as we learn and we apply uh, in our business, then uh, we're just turning it around and sharing that knowledge with you. So uh, we're on the same journey here together. And I mean, that's, that's my big takeaway. I really love giving back. And so here we'll continue to moderate in this group. And for those that decide to join us here on campus, we're gonna continue to give back and share the knowledge that we acquire here. Awesome. So go ahead and start asking some questions. Uh, but before we do, uh, as these questions start to stream in, uh, we'd like to just pass the screen around to another entrepreneur. So just introduce yourself, Marissa. Hi, good afternoon, evening or morning, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Marissa Romero, and uh, I am one of the other entrepreneurs here at Techademics. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here um, to host this Q&A uh, Shopify training. And um, do I talk about myself? Yeah, sure. Uh, very short and sweet. I, let's see, I left the, uh, I did the uh, traditional route. I was never really an uh, entrepreneur until this past December, actually. December, January uh, was when I found the online world. I started off, um, I went to college, graduated in 2011, and uh, got my civil engineering degree, worked in that field for six and a half years um, in the transportation industry, and then, uh, you know, got my master's as well, but there is, for me, there was kind of a void um, in my career and just in my day-to-day -day routine that I wasn't, I wasn't very happy, and um, when I found the online world, when I found Techademics, when I found Shopify, I knew that um, that I had to I had to go full force with it and uh, go full force with the uh, entrepreneurial way, and uh, it's been pretty phenomenal. And I, you know, don't regret um, any decision I've made. And uh, you know, the ten of us here, it's kind of like a little family. Like you see, we we sit here every day in this room. There's no such thing as separating us into cubes or not anything like that um so but yeah our, we're excited here to serve you guys and um help uh you guys maybe possibly have some breakthroughs today something that has been you know uh, bothering you all week about a little glitch in the shopify store or whatever it is so anyways with that um yeah let's see what we... uh first of all i think hey simeon just want to say hi looks like jimmy <laughs> Some of the comments are funny. Um, so Simi said, that's what's happening to me, running my store without success. What do you recommend? Um, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that question so we can get a little more detail, maybe help you better. Um, you know, what what have you done so far? Is your store set up? Are you having challenges with that piece of it or marketing? Um, what have you tried thus far so we can better help you? Thank you, Amber, for helping in the room there. Um, let's see here. Any advice to change on my store to get results as I've been for 46 days now and haven't made any sales? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Amber's gonna jump in real quick and, and answer that one. <laughs> here, I'll let you have some. Thanks. Hey guys, Amber here. So um, real quick, so the question was that he's been on for about 46 days and hasn't had um, seen any success. So one of the biggest things that I can say is I know people say this all the time, but you've got to be testing, testing, testing. So in the beginning, um, I think what a lot of us did or what I did is I tested different products to see which one was going to go. I did a general store, so I tested different products in different niches. Once I found a niche that seemed to be responsive, so I set up like a PPE ad. And the way that you find out is if it's responsive is that they'll start sharing, tagging, and liking. Okay, If you start getting that on an ad, even though you don't have any sales, you know that the niche itself or that audience is responsive. So now what you need to do is try to find a product that is going to make them um, buy it, right? So my advice to you, I don't know, I really can't say um, you need to do this or need to do that without looking at your stuff or knowing exactly what you've done, but 
um, just kind of general basis answer for that would be you've got to test out um, audiences and niches find one that's responsive once you do start putting different products in front of them on a daily basis start launching different products and figure out what product is going to go so that would be my my biggest advice for for that if you've been in this challenge for 46 days and you're not seeing any um, results also make sure that you go back in the training look at your store make sure your store set up properly go through the checkout make sure that you're able to go through it make sure that you're able to go to go to cart um, that you're able to check through check out look at your um, copy on your product description make sure that it looks good I always ask myself if I went here would I buy would it be easy for me to click the button and to be able to buy and if the process is easy for get people to get through then you know that your store is ready to go as far as that so then you want to start looking at your ads um, play with uh, videos play with pictures and maybe even the copy on your ad you just want to be testing 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 change everything change stuff until something works so that would be my advice on that. Oh, great. Good job. Thanks, Amber. So, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add on to what uh, Amber was saying. Listen, guys, um, within your uh, journey here to find a winning ad, just remember you, every product that you uh, put out and run, uh, consider it a test. Not all products will gain traction. Uh, the intent is to have your products gain traction. That mean by traction, I mean you know make sales, uh, conversions, uh, but not every product will do that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, here recently I heard that one out of every five products will actually be a, a winner, and that ratio might be a little different for some of you. But the point being is that not every product will be the one that uh, hits it. Sometimes it's a product that you least suspect uh, ends up being one that you sell more of. Um, additionally. Try not to get emotionally attached to your ads. You know, when when one ad uh, seems to have a little bit of, um, it may have some conversions, they may have uh, some social proof behind it. Uh, and I, I think the key is to learn how to interpret that data and know when to scale out that ad and when to cut it and not be emotionally tied to those. Uh, as beginner, uh, when I started my journey, I felt kind of, I felt that tied to those products, to those ads. I took a lot of pride in picking out um, what I thought were going to be winning products. I took a lot of pride in writing that copy and um, placing it and, you know, just the right picture and all that in front of what I thought was uh, the optimal audience. Uh, but don't let that get in the way. Don't let it stop your growth. The goal here is to continue to test, test, test. You hear that from all the big key players test those products test those ads and just don't lose sight of the long game all right so this is a long game not the short game anything to add um well alejandro asked after a good ppe campaign without sales but a lot of engagement can i move to add to cart alejandro i would i would leverage the engagement you had on that on that ppe ad and and the social proof on it but don't go straight to add to cart move to a view content first and sort of stair step your way up to next would be add to cart then to a purchase and and sometimes you can skip over depending on if you like if you're getting purchases during um on a ppe ad then you could you could go straight to like a purchase um event um on a conversion ad um, but if you're not getting purchases yet then you're going to want to kind of move into view content first let facebook you know let that pixel build and then eventually uh you're going to get some add to carts in that process and then you can kind of move your way up as you as you get them so Hopefully that, that helps there. So um, I would go, go to view, to car, um, view content next. Um, let's see here. When changing um, PB to uh, conversion, I noticed just view, view content, so I'm not able to jump to add to cart. Any advice? Um, Who is that? That's going to be, I think it's Adil. Adil. So when changing PB to website domain. Feedback on that? Well, okay, so mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get some rule of thumb on that. Do I sound? Yes. What's going on, everybody? Sean Sievers here. But uh, we said name's Adil. Adil, yeah. Okay. So to really uh, uh, answer, uh, give clarity on uh, Adil's question, um, from what, what, we, what I've been taught, what we've been taught 
And in order for you to transition over from a view content uh, website conversion to maybe uh, add to cart eventually to purchase, uh, there are some numbers that you want to kind of have a, a following towards to kind of give you that benefit of the doubt to really make that transition. Because there are situations where you can uh, officially jump to a purchase, just a purchase event to website conversion. Like there's some very successful people that are that are as taught here that immediately move to a purchase event and they don't need any PPE. But in this sense, since a lot of us are start, first starting out, uh, until you really want to make that jump and decision where you want to jump straight into Add to Cart, you want to give your view content where you have at least what, 50, was it what, 50 to 100 of view contents as far as that actual pixel pixel firing, where you then you want to go ahead and transition to uh, an Add to Cart where you jump right into it. Some personally I do. Um, that I've heard a lot of successful people do uh, above and about, beyond myself is they they simultaneously run a PPE ad and as well as a, a conversion ad. So essentially starting out, if you're starting out, if you have a product you want to go ahead and get data on, whatever it may be, or get people to even convert to your website, uh, start a PPE ad as well as a view content and therefore give that PPE as well as that view content anywhere from three to four days to really optimize and therefore potentially get you know, customers and conversions right there. And so that's my recommendation recommendation for you, Adil. If that helps, if anything, kind of give yourself at least, what, 50 to 100 view content of fire pixels on your pixel. And therefore, that's when you want to go ahead and graduate to add to cart and eventually uh, a purchase event when it comes down to, you know, uh, website conversion. So, but uh, that's that's really what I have to take on that. Yeah. It sounds like some people maybe have a hard time hearing. It says lost screen and lost sound. Oh, okay. Let's see here, guys. I know. You guys chime in. Just let us know if you can still see us or hear us. Yeah, if you guys could like comment below and just kind of tell us if you can see and hear okay. us, or if you can and cannot. It's so. Okay. Uh, you said it's frozen. Oh man. Yeah, apparently. Okay, we're good now. All right, cool. Okay. Okay. Cool, um, cool. 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 All right. Let's see if we can get down some of these some more of these questions here. Yeah. Um, so we got that. Let's see here. Perfect. Perfect. Appreciate it. I can see screen. Thanks. Not a problem, Adil. Crystal clear. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, Marilyn, just we're, we're kind of still scrolling down. I have my store set up, but I have it on pause. Um, forgot how to put my item in the store. I found a product in another store and don't know how to get it into my store. So Marilyn, there's there's a couple of different ways you can do um, products. There's obviously the manual way where you know if you're pulling, I, I know where you're getting your product from. So if you were pulling it from like AliExpress, uh, the the hard and more manual way would be to save all the images and then go in and create a new product and put in your description and um, the titling and all that information. But there are apps like Shopify and Oberlo that can help you with with moving those things over and make it in a little bit more of an um, I don't want to say automated, but it, it, it helps bring over all of the images, all of the, the descriptions and that type of stuff. So, and you can go in and manually make a few tweaks to it and corrections to it to make the description, the titling um, sound good. Uh, so you might want to look at those two applications um, if you don't want to do it manually. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, so, uh, Mike, I wanted to change from add to cart from view content. I'm not seeing a way to do this. Am I missing something? Um, so. Depending on what the ad's doing, I don't know if you guys want to jump in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you never typically want to adjust, uh, make any changes to an ad that's that's been working. So you're going to want to duplicate the ad set. And then within, when you make that duplicate, you can go back in and you can adjust the um, adjust the event from add to cart or to add to cart from view content. So, Amber, do you have anything to add on that? Or? Yeah, that's what I would say. You never want to... Um, Never want to change or edit an ad while it's running, period. Even if it's not performing, um, when you do, what happens is Facebook re-optimizes. So you're not going to see the results um, for about another 24 hours. So I would always duplicate. And then you can duplicate, run it as the same campaign, the same ad set, and the same um, ad. So it'll ask, um, like, do you want a new campaign or original campaign? Just hit original campaign. And then when you go into the ad set itself and you're looking at the um, event pixel, then you can choose the one that you want to um, do. And then you can, I would always schedule that for 12 a.m. at night to run. And then you'll cut the other one off when that one starts running. That's how I would change it. Cool. Um, 
someone asked about the app you suggested. I just saw. Oh yeah, let's get. Well, I will get onto that. But I'm trying to get catch up on some of these here. We're a little behind here. I'm just. Yeah, I'm just checking checking questions for you guys. Um, I think it's Brian. I don't know if it's Brian or Brian Castillo. Uh, if I do a PP video ad and there is no engagement after a day, uh, reaches 1,600 views, is 700. Should I stop it or let it run for three days? Um, somebody else. I think you'll take on it. Well, well, the rule of thumb, as far as from those who've done what we're, uh, what you're trying to achieve, is you want to give you want to give your po the post that you're doing, the product that you're testing, at least three, uh, sometimes for myself personally, three to four days, uh, for it to really develop to make that decision because it, it takes some time for Facebook to go ahead and gather that that data. So even if it's not, uh, even if the post is not seeing the engagement you want. For example, personally, me, uh, I give you an example. I put a, a product up maybe a week or two ago, and I was in the same scenario after the first day. I was so used to getting so much engagement on the post. It was about two days after I put about $10 into the post, and I had about 10, 10, uh, 10 likes and a comment, and I was going to cut it, but some told me to keep going because I just was based on the information in these videos just like this from the 90-day challenge, uh, 90-day training, uh, training from the challenge. Um, I let it go for another two to three days, and in that three, in that particular time frame, I got over a hundred comments uh, on that particular post, uh, including myself engaging. I got about 50 likes on it all together, and I ended up making a couple sales out of that particular post. But if I if I cut it short, then therefore I, I would have cut my uh, the opportunity for me to see that particular you know the data as far as what is it good data as well as if, am I going to get any sales out of it or am I getting any engagement? So my going back to the more so general of thumb, give it at least three to four days on my as far as uh, to really make a decision on whether you're going to cut the ad or whether you're going to go ahead and keep going with it. Because I see that a lot in the group. People say, I, I, I've been posting this for a day and I have no likes or I have no comments or I have no shares. Give it some time. Let Facebook do its work. And then, therefore, it's going to go ahead and make your official decision once it's uh, appropriate to do so three to four days after uh, you go ahead and put that up. That's what I would say to that particular question. So uh, give it some time. But anybody got you? Got right, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to say that um, you're buying data. So never, never, um, never perceive any of your money spent on these ads as a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an investment in the data. You're purchasing data so that you can make sound decisions on whether or not you need to uh, move forward with scaling or just stop that particular campaign. Uh, and if I may roll into another question here uh, from Otilia uh, Mirella Simeon. Uh, apologies if I mispronounce that, but Otilia. Uh, Otilia asks, how many of you contents needs face in other words, how many of you contents uh, to optimize the Facebook pixel? Okay, uh, good question. So uh, if you want to move from view content to, say, uh, add to cart or purchase, you want to get at least 500 views, view contents. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, okay. Hello, guys, everybody. My name is Fabian Serpa. So uh, we are here from Dan Smith. So follow up that. Do you use shortened links or your sites? Uh, what I can tell about that is uh, don't use the long, the long link. Yeah, maybe use the shorter one if your link is short, or sometimes they go to the build the link or the uh, or the other one. Uh, this is test. You know, some people works with Bitly link or Google one, or but the point here is go like a shorter one, not the biggest one, because if you paste that big uh, link there, the ad will be go so so low, so it will be no crash. Exactly, especially for mobile, that all the all the Plus all the people will be. Yeah, yeah, to play again. Michael said, "Oh, yeah." So if you guys, if you if your store, like for example, if your product, you know, title yeah. is super long, the link your your my shop file or your or your uh, your own domain. URL is going to be really long. So if, it, if it's a really long one, it, it's, it's not a bad thing to use Bitly or use a Google shortener. Um, those work too. So I mean, I've used both. And Can you, he you said, know, so. he said, people said we, uh, okay, we get froze. We're not back. We're back now. We're, We're back. back now. But okay. to kind of emphasize on uh, uh, Roberto, uh, what he was saying is uh, the, the preference, the preference is uh, use a shorter link rather than a longer link. 
as far as a raw link is what uh, Fabian was saying uh, versus a, a longer link in your description, especially if you're uh, trying to target the mobile audience. Is that is that safe to say? Yeah, yeah, that's safe. Okay. Do you have another one that you that you were going to look at, AJ? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, one here. I think Mike, we might have answered your question already, but you said you had, uh, I have 233 view contents, but I'm not finding a way to change it over to add a card. So hopefully we answered that earlier just by duplicating that that ad set mm -hmm. and then going back and in and changing. Um, you can use the same campaign when it asks you, but then you're going to want to change the event from um, from view to cart to, I mean, sorry, view content to add to cart. So mm -hmm. hopefully uh, we answered that before and that, that's that's clear now. Uh, if not, let us know. Yeah, just to clear, just to clear, uh, get clarity on uh, on uh, on uh, what Darren's saying. Just so you know, so when you say you start, say you start a campaign out as a view content, and you want to transition, when you go ahead and you want to check off in your back office the campaign that's uh, the objective is a uh, web website conversion. You duplicate that, and then when you duplicate it, it should auto by default be what the original campaign was. So if it's view content for the first one, the second. The, the, the campaign that you duplicate from the original, it should already be by default view content. You change that from view content, the one you duplicated, to whatever it may be you want to go ahead and transition to. If it's add to cart or if it's a uh, purchase, website purchase conversion or per did I say that right? Yeah, purchase conversion. <laughs> I feel like I said it backwards. <laughs> but therefore, then you go ahead and save that and then you apply that and then therefore you don't have to change necessarily what you uh, what you originally had as far as the view content. That hopefully that makes sense because I feel like people I, I feel like a lot of people don't know that uh, they're they're more so over analyzing the situation but it's a lot more simpler than you think just duplicate that campaign duplicate it and then just change the objective from view content to if it's uh, add to cart or purchase if that makes sense. Okay, here is uh, the Adil Buasawi. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh yeah. So when moving from PPE to WC, should we keep the same audience? I mean, same interest. Yeah, you keep the same interest, but you will be more laser target. You know, you will be PP will be more broad. Yeah, so maybe five million. Yeah, one to five million maybe mm -hmm. will be good. And then in the when you go to WC, you go more detail in the in the interest. So maybe it will be like two hundred to five hundred will be good 200, to eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. But the same interest, yeah. more broad, more narrow, will be I can tell. I don't know. If, you can um, go deep in there. Really go. Yeah, to um, ex to ex uh, expand on that answer a little bit. What you could do for um, what you can do in your PPE ad set is evaluate uh, who is looking at your ad. So if you go to the drop down of the performance column in your ads manager, you could look at um, what gender is looking at it the most, what age groups, what region, country, and then that way when you go um, and create your campaign for website conversion, you can create your ad sets accordingly to the people that are um, engaging with the posts. And yeah, you can keep the same interest, but you can kind of like trim the fat off the ad set because you can target like, you know, the specifics of if it's 23 year olds to 31 year olds that are clicking and engaging most on that uh, PP, then um, that would be, you know, a really, a really good thing to try in one of your ad sets for when you move to WC. Okay. And just, just kind of add on to what uh, uh, Marissa was saying. Yeah, just you really, really use really use your PPE. I would say for, I would say the objective and rule of thumb for me and I, some of us I, I can agree is use your PPE and really get in the habit of analyzing your data off of that PPE. So like she said, trim the fat off of that, off of what's working. So if you go broad for an ad from 18 to 65 or for a PPE, look at the data after three to four days of a PPE and therefore make an audience, make an ad accustomed to a website conversion based on who's engaging more. So an 18 to 65 uh, years old, after three to four days, you see a people that are 25, 34, that's a woman that's more engaged that are on iPhone. You can therefore make that ad precisely and make your dollars a lot more efficient versus going broader. So therefore that that's kind of, that's essentially uh, what you want to more so keep 
uh, on your top priority list when it comes down to looking at your PP. Don't just look at it that I get any sales. It's cool if you do, but also look at it and see how more, how much more precisely you can go ahead and target your ideal customer. Because essentially, you're just trying to get the right audience in front of the right people, the right product in front of the right people. And essentially, you're right. So if you can just target people from 25, 30 versus broad, you're going to save yourself a lot more money, and therefore you're going to make yourself a lot more money without having to go ahead and spend all across the board to 1.8 billion where you could just target to 100,000 to 200,000 people in that age range who have an iPad who live in, uh, in the United States, if that makes sense. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. Uh, just one more thing on that too that I don't think we've mentioned that applies to some of these is when you guys are doing, when you're going from PPE to a conversion ad, make sure you leverage that same post that you've used in the PPE app mm -hmm. because you've got social proof on there, you've got likes, you've got comments, you've got shares, you've got a lot of engagement. So all that is is good social proof. Even if you never got a sale or anything off of that, now when you run your view content ad, now you've got the social proof. So when people see it, they see the other people were looking at it and commenting. And so it just gives it more credibility, I guess, for lack of mm -hmm. a better word. So make sure you're doing that too because I think um, that that's really important. And a lot of people, they tend to like create a whole new post or a new ad and you don't take advantage of the whole reason why you did the PPE in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, there was somebody, let me real quick, somebody was asking, oh, Mason, what would you guys uh, do to, I think it was to make your site more, um, I, I guess it's more secure um, for people, some people who feel comfortable buying from you. Um, there's a number of different things you can do for that. Um, you know, we, if you, if you, there's, there's a lot of images out there that show the secure shopping, so, the Visa, the MasterCard, and the, the whole secure little lock and everything that's mm -hmm. on there. Um, you can get um, apps. There, are some of them. There, there, there are some paid ones, but you know, like McAfee and stuff like that, that give people the, the security and knowing that their their information is going to be secure there. Um, social proof is always a good thing too. Um, depending on what kind of theme you're using, if you're able to put testimonials on there, mm -hmm. that stuff can work. I mean, there's there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I think more than anything is making people feel safe knowing that they can put their credit card in on your website. So, um, and the look in the field too. You want your site to look, you know, it doesn't have to be the, the prettiest thing out there, but at least it looks um, professional um, and not just something that just somebody threw it together. So mm -hmm. um, that's just my opinion on those things. But I think, um, yeah, they just got to feel comfortable putting, putting their credit card with you and knowing that other people are doing the same thing. So yeah, just another another thing to add on to what uh, Darren is saying real quick is uh, um, another a couple of few ways to keep it keep the, the your website customer friendly because essentially all we're doing is we're just a third party we're, we're third we're a third party uh, partner in regards to selling these products and so one thing that I've come across where I've got corrected on personally on my store I had my theme was very it was very depressing in the colors like gray it was very dark things of that nature so. Uh, one thing I would recommend is make sure you have some warm, warm colors as far as it goes. Don't necessarily have too much going on. Clean it up. And another thing is small, but it's big. Uh, what I've come to find out is maybe you're about us. Kind of, if you don't have it now, kind of get into the, get in the agenda of really having a, a mission statement around around your store. Because people, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. They want to know why. People want to know why you have the store. So there's there's people out there that might not want to buy from you because they don't necessarily know who you are. So people want to necessarily identify with you. So if you have uh, a necklace store and then you have a mission statement or whatever it may be, like I want to I want to bring all styles of necklaces uh, together. Just knowing that why kind of gives that, give more of a social proof, like uh, Darren was saying, along with, you know, your theme to, you know, having a certain uh, codes as far as with the credit card, stuff like that. I feel like that all meshes together as far as what I've experienced to what I've heard uh, some of the uh, some of the successful people say, which is very essential. So that's something I really recommend, really getting to, really start thinking about and pondering on your about us when it comes down to uh, why you're having your store and make make sure you make that uh, make that public and also having a, a, a way for them to contact you. So message, uh, messenger or contact us, have it on your page so they, they feel like they can reach out to whoever owns the store, whatever it may be, so. Okay. Yeah, I want to loop back around here and uh, answer. Uh, I see one of the common things we're getting on this thread here is um, how long to run your PPE, your page, your page post engagement ad. So run it five days max. 
I mean, you don't want to lose money over it uh, either in that sense, like keep putting money onto an ad after it, after it's been on for a little while. Uh, whether or not it's getting the social proof that you set out to get, I wouldn't run it any more than five days. Um, and as far as running a free plus shipping offer, um, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't spend any more than about twenty dollars for a free plus shipping offer if there are no sales off of a um, um, website conversion ad. So the other thing I want you to know too is that all this all this training here, um, almost every day that we have this training. There's someone that asks several people during that 24-hour period from the one day to the next is, where do we get the training? What do I do next? I've just joined. What do I do? These kind of questions, a lot of that can be handled if you just go back and look at the videos, the recordings, the replays. So if you look on this page, upper left area, there's a button that says videos, and there's another uh, little section that says files. So you want to make sure that uh, go ahead and engage in that content. Look at those recordings. And just as a helpful tip, um, if you're using the Google Google Chrome, use a Google Chrome extension called Video Speed Controller. So if you use Video Speed Controller, you can get through those videos a little bit faster. Okay, because um, like you, I have a limited amount of time. I still, you know, I come here and uh, all of us were coming here were. Uh, um, helping tech academics and moderating this group here and all that. So, and on top of that, we have our personal lives. So we're with you, okay? I mentioned that a little bit earlier that we're on the same journey. So we all have though, the one thing we have in common is the 24 hours in a day. So we have to prioritize our time. And if it means uh, utilizing some, um, like a video speed controller to pare down a two hour video down to, you know, something like an hour, an hour and a half. I mean, those little cut corner uh, tips really help get through your day and get the content you need so you can implement and test. So that's that's what I have. Yeah, no, it's, I was actually just gonna comment on that, so that's great. Um, and that video speed controller is awesome. I have, I don't watch, I don't watch video the same way anymore and it saves you a lot of time. Um, okay, let's get through, by the way, we've had a couple comments that the video is kind of cutting in and out. Um, are you guys still having problems with that? Cause I wanna make sure you're seeing this. It doesn't appear to be that way on our end, but I don't want you missing out on this. Um, so I don't know if it's Samer or Samer. Apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Should I start with a PPE of 1 million first and then 24 to 48 hours later, a view content of 250 to 500K and learn which age ranges interacted most to target them better with the view content ad? Um, basically use the PPE as a guide for the view content. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, I mean, I, I would say that uh, we kind of touched on this before, uh, Fabian did, where if you're doing PPE, initially an audience of one to five million is good. You want to go more broad there because you're just really looking for engagement. Um, the expectation on a PPE ad is not to get a sale. I mean, it's just if you do, that's fantastic, but that's not that's definitely not the expectation. So um, I might that let that run for at least 48 hours. I mean, it really depends on how much engagement you get over that period of time, if in 24 hours you got a thousand likes and you know a hundred shares and comments, well then then you've got you've got some good data there. So, um, but yeah, then you can you can take a look at that and 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 use that to help you gauge the audience for when you switch over to view content, and and that view content ad should the, the audience should be somewhere between that 200 800 thousand mark. Um, so uh, I think generally speaking, you have a pretty good plan there. Just you got to watch the numbers and see what happens. Um, again, this is all we say it a lot, and it's it, we we kick this horse a lot, but it's test, test, test. I mean, there's can't really say that enough. Um, whether that be just the, the ads that you're running or testing new products, I mean, everything that you do, um, you, you got to test it and see what people react to. So, um, go ahead, yes. Yeah, Michelle Soy asked. She said uh, she had nine sales on her product, then nothing for a few days. Should she run? Did you answer that one already? No, but yeah, I saw but, that. Yeah, so should she run uh, a different objective? Well, this is what I would do is uh, after having had some sales, you can um, uh, duplicate that ad and then add a different uh, – well, look at the data first. So if you know how to look at the data, look at the data, see who interacted 
with that with those purchases like which age groups and from which platform and then uh, duplicate the ad and then um, you target just those age groups uh, even down to the gender so for example if most of your sales came from age group um, say 21 to 34 okay then du duplicate the ad and select just that age group and if it was mostly females using iPhones for instance okay so maybe you can even duplicate the ad again and then just target um, that age group uh, women uh, out of uh, iPhone for instance or Android or what have you so I mean there's just different ways to go about it so that's just um, a little bit yeah. on that and then one more with uh, Daniel Mazza I was gonna so, answer that too. okay go ahead yeah absolutely yeah so first of all let's see you had nine sales on a product and nothing so we need to know what your objective was were you running a PPE or a conversion If you're running a PPE that's awesome. Now you want to go ahead and set up a conversion and run it to that exact same post that you had the PPE running to. If you were doing a conversion, um, like Roberto said, we need to know where you started from. Were you doing a view cart? Were you doing, um, I mean, view content, add to cart. Um, if, if you're at one of those and you can kind of move up the ladder, if you got nine um, sales on an ad, I would go, and, rather, if it was me, regardless whether you're running a PPE, or a conversion, I would go straight to conversion purchase because that's a winning ad. You got nine sales on it. Now, depending on how long. Um, so guys, when you're asking these questions, make sure that you're getting really detailed. Are you running a PPE? Are you running a conversion? How long has it been running? You had nine sales in what amount of time? Um, so we need to know all that information in order to give you a solid answer. But if it was me, I would go ahead and run a conversion purchase to it, to the same audience. Um, to the same page that I was, or same page post that I was running the prior ad to, and see if it converts that way. Cool, um, Mustafa, uh, you run a PPE campaign, and you get some social proof on your video. Can you move to purchase conversion? Um, well, it depends on how much, uh, how much engagement that you've had on that PPE ad. Um, I think we've mentioned some numbers here, so hopefully you heard those, but. Once you do, I mean, if, if you haven't had any add to carts or purchases on that PPE campaign, I would probably start with a view content uh, conversion first uh, and, get in, and let the pixel gather some more data on that. And then you can move into like an add to cart or a purchase after that. Because hopefully at that point, you're starting to see at least some add to carts, if not um, uh, purchases as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, Jen Mark, after choosing your product and creating the fan page, is it wise to run an ad for likes, then post your ad and run a conversion ad? Um, well, you're gonna you're gonna run initially after you set up the conversion, or I'm sorry, the fan page, you're gonna run a typically run a PPE ad first to get the engagement. Um, and then once you get the engagement, just like I was just saying, then you can switch over to a um, a website conversion ad um, and you would normally select view content initially for that so what else you see the question? Uh, Daniel Mazza asked some people recommend to keep one day instead of seven day conversions window to improve ROI what's your opinion uh, here we're just running with seven day conversion window I wouldn't um, I wouldn't mess with going with one day yeah other question that we have here is that People ask when I should schedule my ad. So mm -hmm. that's a good question. Uh, we recommend you that schedule if you are in the evening. So better wait to until the mm -hmm. start of the day, day yeah, midnight. So you can start the ad from the beginning of the day. Otherwise, Facebook will try to spend all your money as fast as they can. So wait until the other day at the midnight so you can have all 24 hours. So you can yeah. start the ad. Yeah. So I mean, basically, if you're yeah, if you're if you're building your ad in the morning and you can launch it in yeah, the morning, then then you're probably okay. But if it starts to get into the afternoon and the evening hours, uh, like Fabian's saying, first of all, you're only going to get limited data for that day. But also, too, there is the possibility that Facebook will just go through your entire day's budget within. Let's say you launch an ad at 10 p.m. It has happened where between 10 p.m. and midnight, you burn through the entire day's budget. In those couple hours and now you have frankly probably a lot of bad data because they just push it out to anybody so um so that's definitely good advice um what else do you see uh jen mark nelson 
Uh, I think the question is, uh, what should the target number audience, um, how large the audience for running an ad in the big five countries? So uh, for those unaware, the big five countries would be the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and United Kingdom. Anyway, so it, I guess it depends on what kind of campaign you're running. So again, if you're running a PPE, uh, the audience size should be anywhere from 1 million to 5 million. Um, and then if you're running a conversion, website conversion ad uh, campaign, uh, that should be, um, it's generally uh, recommended to go anywhere from 200,000 to 800,000. So really, I think the takeaway, it doesn't matter uh, how many countries you're running to. Um, it, it, it goes down to targeting your audience down to a sweet spot of 200 to 800,000. Then that kind of add on to the Kind of add on to what uh, Roberta was saying. Uh, yeah, the more so rule of thumb, it's not necessarily the country, there's more so the audience. So the objective of PPE is to get a lot of people engaged. So you, while if it, logically, if you think about it, why would you do a PPE ad towards 100,000 people? You can do it, but the rule, what we're trying to do is gain social proof engagement, see who's liking the post, and therefore just get people to like it. And so odds are people in that, that range of millions of people, you're going to get that. Versus uh, website conversion, 200 to 8,000 people, 200,000 to 800,000 people. That's more so precise to find people that are more serious in buying. Like Facebook's going off behavior. That's why they have these events. So if anything, kind of really go off of that rule of thumb. Like, because uh, essentially what we're going off of is what we've seen is work. So like I said, millions. So one to five million to kind of just if you had if you had to write something down right now and kind of follow something for the time being. Uh, right now, PPE ads you want to have in the rule of thumb of one to five million people as far as getting people to engage into it. And then if you want to find people in a converge, website conversion from view content, uh, add to cart, purchase, you want to stay in the realm of 200,000 to 800,000. Because the reality of it is, um, there's not too many products that can continuously make you money. So essentially, it's always going to run out. So logically, you want to give yourself just enough time to chew through that you do that crowd but just enough where you're not saturating it in a day if that makes sense so but. another a uh, couple of people have asked this question it's and it's actually a really good question um, about um, being able to keep the data from your PPE ad when you're switching over to website conversion um, so when you do a PPE ad obviously you're creating a page post whether it be just a post on your actual fan page or you're doing a dark post I don't want to get too deep in the details of that but you get the engagement when you switch over to a website conversion ad uh, you're going to go back in first of all you're going to duplicate the ad set um, and you're going to use the same campaign but when you go back in it's going to give you the option to choose the page post that you want to use for that you go back in and you choose the same page post you use for the PPE campaign and it brings all of that post and, and, and the data with it all of the social proof so all of your likes shares comments all that stuff will come along with it so um, when you create the new ad, you'll see that in there. Um, hopefully that answers your guys' question on that one. Adil asks, are magazines the best interests we should be using? And is intersecting important or we can or can we make it without it? So magazines uh, is a good one to start with, absolutely. So, um, you know, think about the kind of, the kind of things that your target audience would like. So if it's magazines, well then, um, the magazines it is. Uh, if it's uh, TV shows or TV series, then you might consider that too. Or if you're Society. selling like, yeah, societies or maybe even like um, like jewelries, uh, certain jewelry, you might want to target um, the kind of stores that maybe uh, costume jewelry lovers would like to visit. Um, so I, I think you get the idea with that. And is intersecting important? Absolutely. Intersecting is, I think, critical. So if you're going to find um, a, real good, a real good audience, an audience that can, um, this is what I'm trying to say. I think if you're going to find the passionate audience, um, finding an intersecting audience or flex targeting, as it's called sometimes, is, is critical to, uh, to uh, reaching those passionate um, people who really resonate with your product. For instance, Let's say you're selling a mug. Uh, of course, you might want to fill it with coffee, yes? So a coffee mug. And you're going to want to target 
uh, whatever. So if you have a designless coffee mug like of a, of a, of a puppy, an animal, right, like a dog. Um, so you're going to want uh, an example of targeting, uh, flex targeting uh, or intersecting audience would be coffee lovers who also happen to love puppies or you know, dogs or dog lovers who love coffee. And then now you have that uh, passionate audience. Just a little more narrow. <clears throat> well, um, Michael uh, asked, should we always do PPE view content, add to cart, and purchase in that order? Um, in a lot of cases, yes, but you can also do, you can run a PPE ad and a view content ad concurrently as well. Um, so, so you have the option of running a PPE, getting the engagement, and then moving into a view content a conversion ad, um, or you can do PPE and view content at the same time, uh, and then move into um, an add to cart or purchase after you've uh, gotten some data on that and, and actually tested it and made sure that you're getting engagement. And, and then when you're doing the view content, that they're, you're at least getting some add to carts. So, sure. <clears throat> to add on to what uh, Darren was saying, uh, to that question, more to say, uh, starting out, just to kind of clarify, uh, because there's a there's a bunch of ways on how things work. Like the thing is with this with this industry, there's fundamentals to follow, but there's so many things that change. And so just to kind of give you an idea, starting out, you want to kind of start with and gradually work your way up from view content, add to cart, web, uh, website conversion as far as the purchase. But eventually, because there's people in this industry where they don't need uh, a view content or add to cart because they have a seasoned pixel, meaning they've got that data. There's people out there. Uh, that literally go initially straight into purchase. So essentially starting out, you wanna go ahead and work your way up that ladder, but eventually you won't need that essentially because you're gonna, that your pixel is gonna have so much data where you could just do a purchase event all together. So it's not necessarily an end all be all, but it's, it's kind of like taking your training wheels off. So essentially mm -hmm. think of it in that sense when it comes down to uh, maturing your pixel. So kind of get clarity on that. We've got some people here uh, commenting, great tip. Uh, from Matthew, Jeanette says, good info, appreciate that. Uh, guys, we're trying real hard here to uh, get all, to all your questions. It's a lot of you. Um, uh, an, an, another concern here in the group is that the video keeps cutting out or we keep dropping. Listen, hit refresh uh, periodically if that happens to you, or sometimes you'll get the little play button that l appears on your screen. Just do that. Um, so apologies for that. Uh, keep those thumbs ups and hearts coming. We like that. It makes us feel good to be able to contribute back to the community. Uh, Darren, you got anything? Um, yeah, we got a few here. So I think it's Kareem. What's the most important skill set uh, or skill we need to master in order to succeed in e-commerce? Is it Facebook ads? Um, my personal opinion is it's probably two things. Because um, setting up a store, it's fairly mechanical, and, and you can you can learn that I think fairly easily. But I think product selection. Uh, is really important, and then yes, Facebook ads for sure. Those are probably my two, um, if I'm giving my own opinion on what's the most important thing. Um, I wonder if you guys have anything to add on that, or do you agree? Yeah, I essentially agree. Like, okay. I was, like I said, Shopify is a, you need to have the correct correct uh, tools, you need to have it set up correctly, but the, the big rule, the, the one I would say that's over that is Facebook, but essentially they're both important, but when it comes down to driving traffic, because essentially, I'm sure we all have gone to AliExpress or gone to these uh, retailers overseas, wherever it may be, and they have orders on the product. So in our minds, I'm sure we all thought, well, that product sells, so I, I should be able to sell that. We, we know they sell. It's just a matter of us. We got to get good at driving traffic. Once we know how to drive traffic, you can essentially dominate any market you want. You, the market's going to tell you whether they like it or not. Either they're going to buy 10 of them or they're going to buy 1,000 of them. There's somebody out there that's going to buy them. We just got to get good at matching the audience with the product. That's essentially the game. It's kind of like solving a Rubik's Cube. Once you do it, essentially, it's going to be uh, more simple than it. anything. It's always changing. I'm not saying it's going to be uh, easy, but it's simple in, in the concept because a lot of us are in our own head. We always think of, well, I don't like that. But then again, there's stuff that we got Econ Rob sold or uh, Darren or myself that have sold, but we would not buy it. A lot of us keep staying in our brain. We got to kind of think of the consumer. Like you said, magazines, events, uh, you know, uh, uh, associations, stuff like that. Kind of brainstorm that if you have anybody. You can't pay attention to what people are talking about because it might pop something in your head where you're like, wow, okay, I can make that an interest. So. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's testing, like we said. You know, it's like you can, even if whether you like it or don't like it, let people vote on it. 
yeah. with their wallet. I mean, at the end of the day, that's how you gauge success with this stuff. So, um, let's see, uh, Kirk, what's a real realistic expectation on cost to test a new product to sell? Um, I well, for, we 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 kind of live by the five dollar a day budget. So initially, if you're if you're starting um, with a PPE ad and then moving to a website conversion ad, if you have success with the PPE after three days, you've spent fifteen bucks. Um, you're going to move into a website conversion ad, and I would say that you're probably going to spend another do another three days of testing there. So, I mean, thirty dollars or so. If you have success with with you know through, through the PPE, you're going to spend at least fifteen, and then again another fifteen on on. Uh, on a conversion ad. Uh, Sue Fien, uh says, hey, can we talk about manual bidding? I'll tell you what, uh, that's a bit of an advanced uh, feature where we stay with uh, automatic bidding, <clears throat> automatic, just don't go there just yet. Okay, so yeah. uh, if you're an advanced user, then I suggest um, seeking the assistance from advanced users. Um, but in this circle, the 90 day challenge, we're all about serving uh, folks primarily uh, who are getting started with Shopify. So um, don't get too concerned. If you're not at that point yet, just uh, bypass that for now. Most people will just do automatic. Again, guys, I see uh, other comments coming in. Hey, where do we find the training? Uh, someone even within the group answered. Um, there's some recordings, upper left area of this page. Uh, we've recorded these. We're on day 46. 46. Yeah, and 46. so... Think about it. There's a ton of information there. Some of these questions, um, it can uh, again, if you revisit that section of the recordings, um, day one all the way through to uh, day 45, there's invaluable information in there, okay? Just a ton of content ranging from basic setup to uh, some of this Facebook advertising that we're talking about today. So um, also there's some outlines in there and files to check out. So don't be afraid to go back in there. Uh, you'll be surprised just how much that you'll learn just by going through that content. And again, earlier I shared video speed controller. We want to mark that down, video speed controller, to get through those videos a little bit quicker. Yeah, and that's, by the way, it's a Chrome extension, so you have to have Chrome, be using Chrome to use that. You can just type in Chrome extensions into Google, go there, and then search for video speed controller to find that. So it's really helpful. So I think Fabian has a question he wanted to address. Yes, here uh, Melanie asks, how important is to offer PayPal as a payment method? Is it really that popular over just credit card? I think that um, the more you give, the more maybe more options you have to people be like comfortable in your store. So PayPal is uh, your trust method to pay because they don't have to put like the the credit card in for there. Or oh, yeah, you just only have to put the email and pay through PayPal. So if you have the option to add PayPal to your Shopify store, I highly recommend it. So it gives you like more trust and more options to the buyer to maybe make the make the purchase. Um, it's also I oh, I'm sorry. It's you also guys? it's also important in the European market. They tend to want to use PayPal more. So yeah. Yeah, I would add it if you're including uh, European countries on your list of countries to ship to. Perfect. And then Marissa. Um, and then in my own. In my personal experience with uh, pay credit card versus PayPal, my conversion rate got better when um, I included PayPal as an option because there was maybe a three or four day period when I took PayPal <sighs> off because um, because of the risk of PayPal not giving you your money and, and such. Um, and But when I put PayPal back on, a customer started using it right away, so I think I'm just gonna leave it on there. And what I do is, once I get a certain amount of a certain to a certain dollar amount, or um, certain number of orders in my PayPal, I'll right away transfer it to my bank so that there's no um, issues of it getting flagged or anything from PayPal. So, uh, yeah, I would suggest using both. Cool. Thank you, uh, Brian. You were asking about. Um, does it have to be a published post or can you use an unpublished or dark post for website conversion? Um, personally, I would use dark posts, um, especially because what's going to happen is you're going to start testing a lot of products, running a lot of ads, and if you're not running unpublished or dark post, then the fan page gets cluttered with just a bunch of ads. Mm -hmm. And 
um, you want the fan page to be mostly about content. Um, yeah. If you're going to build it out, build content. I mean, every once in a while to throw in um, an actual published post is fine. Um, but I would say you probably kind of at least want to live by the 80-20 rule if you're doing that. Um, so I would, yeah, so I would say uh, an unpublished or dark post is great. Um, Mike, I know you've asked a couple times about the staff accounts. Can you do us a favor, just contact one of us um, offline and we can we can help you with that. I'm not sure exactly um, what you want to know about it, but I want to make sure you get your question answered. Uh, let's yeah. see here. So maybe I say that. Thanks, everybody, for all the questions that we have in here, all the support here. Uh, really appreciate it. <laughs> let's see here. I'm just looking through some more questions. I think we have quite a few still left. We'll probably give this a little bit longer, and then we're going to probably wrap up. So. Uh, best format to use traffic or conversion ad for a product. Uh, Tim, I, I would kind of go by the structure that we've been talking about as far as um, using the PPE ad first, if you're going to go that route and get the engagement, get the social proof, and then switch over to a conversion ad once you do have that. Um, and if you don't get it, then then, then you might just want to kill it and, and tr test something different. Um, let's see here. Did you have anything over Yeah, Sam or Shamus. Samer Shamus asks, do you recommend videos of still images or is that not efficient as carousel since they're static? Um, Facebook is going to perceive those still images put into a um, um, kind of like a, what do you call that? Like a, um, it's like when you put the still images into a, a little short video, like a slideshow. Yeah. Yeah. So you can make a little video out of still images and still Facebook is going to perceive it to be a video. And that's going to be fine. You're going to get, um, it'll cost you less than uh, just putting up a static picture of your product. Yeah. So good good question. Yeah. I mean, Facebook, Facebook loves video and they reward it. Um, I mean, the longer they can keep somebody on Facebook, the better. So you're going to find that if you, I mean, again, this is all about testing. You could use a static image and I'm sure there are instances where it could outperform a video, but, um, but you want to test them. But ultimately, even if you do a slideshow, it is this looked at as a video, and so you're going to get you're going to get rewarded for that. And, and typically, video uh, is going to cost you less too when you look at, at your ad. So um, let's see here. Joshua, uh, one of the biggest mistakes. Uh, what what was one of your biggest mistakes you could help us avoid? I say um, not taking action soon enough. Absolutely. So you keep hearing uh, us talk about testing your ads. Uh, just get over that fear about maybe not getting the results right away. Uh, like I said, it's test, 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 and um, don't let fear uh, paralyze you from taking action. So your store doesn't have – don't get caught up in making your store picture perfect, okay? You can't compete with the big box stores, the big names on the Internet, the, uh, the big polished name brands out there that have their website selling online. You just can't. So focus on – uh, your ad copy, focus on uh, taking daily actions, um, putting up, uh, you know, doing your product research and just coming up with a schedule that works for you with the, the amount of time that you have and the, bud and the budget that you have. But take action every day, carve out some time, wake up earlier, stay up later. It's a life of an entrepreneur. So if this is going to succeed, it's going to be up to you and your efforts. So, but don't let um, um, fear paralyze you, you, your store again doesn't have to look perfect here here's another big tip when you think about your store yes you want it to look nice and polished and pretty with all the bells and whistles but when you think about it you're advertising one product on facebook chances are the people who are going to click on that product to take a look at it and maybe make that purchase they're most of them like 90 percent aren't even going to go poking around the rest of your store they're not even going to see the rest of your store so uh, while it's nice to have a, a polished store, it, it's not, especially now when you're starting off, it's really not that important uh, from the outset. You'll have time later. Focus on getting your sales. Yeah, not and don't feel the need to put in 100 products. Um, you know, get, get started with five or whatever, you know, uh, and, and like Roberto was saying, you know, you're, they're going to, most likely, they're only going to look at that one product that they came off of website or came off of Facebook, uh, off the Facebook ad to see. So um, they're probably not even going to see most of your other products in that case. Um, but there's nothing wrong. I mean, we were just looking at a store yesterday where they literally have one product on the store, and that's it. So you can be successful doing that. Um, so the, the, the idea is just take action. I think that's probably 
like you were saying, it's like that's what most people worry too much about, having everything so perfect, um, and then they never really do anything. So just don't worry about it being perfect. Don't worry about it being pretty and all that. Just, um, you know, get the products up and then get some ads running and start testing. Darren, I get the question all the time, how many products should I have in my store uh, before I get started? Really, I mean, if you can start with 10 products, I mean, literally, you can start with one product. Uh, but just, again, don't let – don't let how many products you have in your store hold you back from placing your first ad. So if you have one product, great. You can place an ad. Um, you can start off with 10 products. But the point is you can continually add, uh, you know, create new ads. And if you're going to create new ads, that means you have to have products. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, eventually you're going to start uh, putting more and more in your store, and you want to do that. Yeah. But to get started, all you need is one. Yeah. And really, add on that, just kind of close it off as far as it goes. Try to get into a rhythm as far as how often you test your product. Like, like I said, but just to put it this way, if you knew that it took you, just say you knew the scenario. If you knew that you were one product for every hundred products you tested, you have you knew that one was going to blow up. Would you would you get discouraged from testing 99 or 100 products? If you knew 101 was going to be the one that's going to blow up, like how determined would you be to be testing and figuring out out of those hundred products? to go ahead and figure out which one's going to blow up. If I knew that, I would go crazy in the sense of testing and figure out which one works. So get in the rhythm of doing that. People, Like I said, people get so attached. They're like, oh, my God, but I want to make this work, but I like it. It looks blue. It looks like this. Get in the habit of testing, and the faster you test, the more data you're going to get, the more data you're going to get, the faster you're going to get your, your pixel matured, and you know the closer you're going to get to that winning product because one, one win can offset 99 losses. Like look like if you look at it that way, you're like, dude, all I need is one to offset all these losses. Therefore, you know, the, the sky's the limit in that sense. So. And the good news is it's probably not gonna take you a hundred. So yeah, I'm just <laughs> if saying you, that yeah, problem. no, but you're right, absolutely. Yeah. But he's he's got a very good point. So um let's see. Get some yeah, more. My, Michael Vasquez asked, Will you mess up an ad if you add a group to exclude to target while it's active? Uh chances are uh yes. yes. So <laughs> what you want to do is if you if you find that you have to change anything about your ad uh, Michael, you want to go ahead and create, like duplicate that ad and then make your changes and then pause the ad that you no longer wish to have going. On, uh, on the flip side, though, on that particular ad, you know, maybe it's gaining traction. Maybe you get a sale or two. Uh, if it's working, if it's making sales, leave it on uh, and then just have a, a duplicate ad running, um, you know, say a, another country to it or uh, some – a different, you know, age group added or excluded from it or what have you. But yeah, uh, once the ad is going, and I think that Darren mentioned earlier, uh, mentioned it earlier. Uh, once the ad is up and running, don't go back and make changes to it because you'll confuse Facebook yeah. and um, um, that optimization of the pixel will be delayed. Yeah, I mean, basically, Facebook will go back and re-optimize the ad, and it just it, it it'll mess it up. So you're better off just duplicating and going and starting um, a, a new uh, a new ad set. Um, Daryl. Uh, Stout, what would be a gu uh, guide to deciding if your PPE engagement is high enough to justify running uh, website conversion ads to the same audience? Um, I think the rule of thumb that we use around here is about a thousand likes. Um, ideally, uh, you want to have a fair amount of comments and shares to go along with that. Um, you know, over 100 is ideal for each one of those, uh, but that's that's probably a good number to work with. Um, Mark uh, Verhoeven, I think it is. Um, so you wanted more training about um, matching audiences to a product. So we'll, we'll have to make sure we do, do some more of that for you. But you said for now, uh, some golden tips for finding the best converting audiences. Um, well, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways to, to do this. One is to use what we kind of like seems to be the theme of today's Q&A, and that is just the process in which you launch ads, what type of ads you use. So, again, it's all about testing. But... So you're going to start with PP, and then move into website conversions using either view content, add to cart, add to cart or purchases. Um, but within that, you know, initially you can go broad with the PPE ad. But what, once you get through that process, you're going to narrow your, your audiences down. Um, and that's when you can start figuring out, you know, within, within that broad scope audience, you can look at, you know, influencers in that audience and create a new audience just with them. You can find associations. You can find... Um, magazines, uh, a lot of times if people read magazines, they're probably pretty um, pretty engaged, uh, and, they, and they'll probably be a good, uh, somebody good to, to target. Um, so, so break it down into, into groups 
and then you can kind of get a better perspective. And then from there, you know, you, you can break it down even more once you get more data about, you know, what, what age, what gender is viewing it, those types of things. And you can get more and more granular with it until you get down to a really super highly targeted audience. Um, I hope that helps answer your question. Um, and then let's see here. This, this, I'm going to, I'm going to kill this name. I apologize. It's this Venta. Mr. Mr. Marks. Yeah. I'm going to say Mr. Mar M A R C E is the last name. Um, you're asking about uh, the difference between running a $5, $10, $20, or $50 ad. Um, the more you pay, what happens? Um, here, here's what I what I have learned is that um, when you give Facebook less to work with, they're more calculated in how they spend it. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna make more of an effort to go after the audience that you've been very careful in selecting. Versus if you just throw in 50 bucks, um, it, it could go out to a lot of people uh, and and not be as targeted. I guess is the best way. I don't know if you if yeah. you want to elaborate on that, but that's, yeah. And conversely. If your budget can support it, I mean, you did mention fifty dollars, which I think is a bit high for um, for where we're at here and starting up our Shopify stores. Because uh, granted, there are folks with highly seasoned pixels that can afford, uh, maybe within their budget, or just because of the fact that their pixels are very seasoned. Facebook already understands the, uh, the audience that this uh, person really is after, and the fifty dollars is is very doable for them. But at this stage of the game, I would say uh, stick to the five, you know, yeah. stick to the teachings, okay? Uh, stick to the basics, and if you can, if your budget affords, you know, ten dollars, um, it's gonna, it's Facebook can gather your data just a little bit faster. Well, and keep in mind, guys, this, the five dollars is all about just the testing phase, the initial phase. I mean, Chris Record, any of these, any of the big guys in the industry will all talk to you about doing testing with five dollar a day ads. Um, that doesn't mean that once you've done the testing, that you can't scale it up because that's definitely what you want to do. So. But initially, you know, look at a $5 a day budget uh, and then, you know, do your three or four days, prove it out. Then you can start to look at moving it up and, and duplicating ad sets and increasing the budget on those, on those duplicated ad sets and then growing it up. I mean, there, there obviously are plenty of people that are running $50 a day budget on ads, even, you know, 100 or more. So um, it, it's all over the place. You know, it, it grows as your business grows. So um, just keep that in mind. The $5 is, is really for the, um, is for the testing phase. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's do a couple more here, and we'll try to wrap up. We've been going for uh, about an hour and 15 minutes here, I believe. So um, we want to start to wind this down. Any other questions that you guys see? I, I lost the feed there. Let's see here. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate, appreciate the compliment there. Uh, let's see here. How do you know when your Facebook post is seasoned? Um, so uh, let's see here. Dan, Jacob, how do you know when your Facebook uh, pixel is seasoned or at what point do you switch from PPE to conversions? We just kind of address that a little bit. About a thousand or so likes on your PPE ad and you're going to have, you know, corresponding comments and shares to go along with that if you've got that many likes on it, typically anyway. Um, so that's a good point to, to switch over. Um, from a uh, from a sales perspective, um, I think what what's the purchase a number of purchases to get to a fairly season? I mean, it's at least 25 sales, but I I can't recall exactly what the number yeah. is um, on that. Let's see. You must have been at if you had a group. Yeah, we talked about that. How much money should you have before you kill it? Tim Herman, I think we kind of addressed this, but you know you want to you know five dollars a day for three to four days. On a PPE ad, if that's successful, then switch it over to a conversion ad and run that for another three to four days at five dollars a day. So, um, you know, all said and done, um, if you don't have success after the conversion ad runs, you're you're out about fifteen to or thirty to forty bucks. Um, let's see here. I found my target audience. I think how should I scale properly and should I continue testing for more audiences? I feel like I can do better. Uh, David Lee, um, if you if you've done everything we've talked about, us and and you're you're making sales, um, scaling is um, is about duplicating the ad set, the successful ad set, um, and the ad. So you you can you can scale a number of different ways, and I, I this we probably don't want to get too deep into this on on this Q and A, but one is by taking a look at your at your stats. Uh, 
within the ads manager, you can get all kinds of information about the audience that's buying, um, who's, who's clicking through, who's purchasing, what age groups, what genders um, is, is doing it. Um, and there's a number of other things you can, you can break it down by. So you can separate an ad or break out an ad that way and say, okay, um, I'm gonna further test on, you know, say 10 year age ranges and you can create a number of ad sets that way. The other way is just a straight scale on, on budget. Um, so there's a number of different ways you can do that. But again, this is all predicated on the fact that you've been successful in your conversion ad and you've gotten sales off of that um, in order to justify scaling. Let's see here. You guys see any other questions here? There's actually quite a few, so. Just a couple of FAQs, that's it. Uh, Brian yeah. Castillo, is there a way to track where a purchase came from? Absolutely. Um, this is something that's real important. In fact, we've spent a lot of time on it as entrepreneurs, um, especially lately, reading the data. Um, so we prefer to create and um, publish our ads through Power Editor. But when you go to analyze the data from those ads, Ads Manager is the place to go because you can customize all the columns, um, to be able to see the data that you want to see. And we may want to do another another uh, live um, just on, on this alone. Frankly, we could spend quite a bit of time on it. But um, there there is a way to create a column that will show the conversions, the website conversions and the purchases. Uh, and you're just going to go in uh, to your ads manager and you'll see, I don't have it in front of me right now. I forgot what the name of the... Um, the the, call, the uh, button is the, to create it. But you'll see it's right now. It's right next to breakdown. Uh, it's a way to customize the the columns that you can see. So you can check your your CPC, your CPM, um, your purchases, your spend, all of that stuff. Um, but the data is really important because you got to be able to decide whether or not you could you want to cut an ad or or scale it up. Um, you know, so so that's that's where you would go in to find that information. Joshua's boys wants to know if we're yeah, real. Yeah. So hello, Noah. <laughs> hello, Elijah. Yes, yeah. we're a real bunch of people here. Um, glad you're watching. You know, it's crazy how we've got people very young interested in e-commerce, and then we it spans the actual age ranges all the way up to, you know, um, folks in their 60s, 70s, and even 80s. Uh, we've had them here on site in the campus from the very young to um, the mature audience. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, it looks like... How do I get rid of Facebook bots? Um, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know what that question really means. Uh, Facebook has a lot of automation going on in the background. Uh, a lot of it's mysterious to most of us, uh, even to the experts. So hence the uh, test, test, test. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're if if you're getting um, if you're talking about bots as far as like Messenger and you're getting uh, <clears throat> messages sent to you. Um, you, you may have you may have opted into something if that's if that's what you're talking about. I mean, it's hard to under, to know what what exactly your question is, but um, there are bots that are out there that uh, marketers use. Um, you know, we, we we even talk about that in some of our trainings. Um, ways to automate the the marketing process um, using Messenger. So I don't know where you, where these bots are are coming to you from if it's coming through Messenger, but um, you may have opted into something that uh, that's sending you those. Um, let's see here. Jeff likes to put question. Which one's that? Raise if you raise your dollar amount on daily spend, must yeah. we duplicate? Uh, Mike, yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, the, there's different schools of thought on that, to be honest with you. on, on If you're raising your, uh, your budget, must you duplicate? Um, the, way, the way that we've been taught here is, is to duplicate the ad, the ad set. And you, you never want to mess with something that's working. Um, again, uh, that forces uh, Facebook to re-optimize the ad. But uh, so what you're going to do is duplicate that winning ad set in the ad, and then you can raise the budget from there. Um, and that's going to be the safest way to scale without without kind of screwing everything up. Um, Go ahead. There, there's another thing. Um, the general rule on that is you can increase it by about 20% without right affecting the ad um, you know it's a slow growth but um, if you do more than that 20 to 25 percent it's going to cause a change in your optimization um, it will be like starting a new ad for some people 
So I, if you're going to increase it, um, stick to that 20 to 25%. Also do what we've been talking about where you duplicate the ad and uh, scale that way also. Uh, you know, because you don't want to change the ad that's working and you want to keep it going and you want to increase it. So I do the 20% and duplicate and do other ad sets. Hope that answers that question. Yeah, no, it's good. Now, and that's, I mean, that's where we're saying too, there's different schools of thought on this. You can, you, at, a, at, a, at the most, you, you wouldn't want to say double your budget on, on an ad that's already running. But um, like I was saying, you know, 20 per 20%, you know, 10, 20% is probably, probably going to be okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, going conversions, the link ads. I'm not running any secret sites. Should I scale? We're gonna have something for uh, before we get off. Okay. <coughs> well, fine. I don't think I shut down. Go ahead. Do you want to add something? Right. Yeah, there's a couple things I wanted to um, go ahead and add uh, as we go ahead and wind down. Uh, for those who are still on, <coughs> and for those who are watching this, number one, um, get more detail with your questions. Uh, when it comes down to you wanting the post being improved, because you got some. Some people have to realize that uh, there's over 14,000 uh, plus members in this group and it's continuously growing. So hourly, we're averaging anywhere from 50 to 100 questions ongoing. So if you want your post to be approved and you want an answer for it, make sure you're being precise and you're being detailed when it comes down to uh, your questions. Because the thing is, we want to help. We want to. But then again, you have to help us to help you. So number one, you have to uh, go ahead and have precise, detailed questions. Also, one thing I cannot emphasize enough is uh, the 90-day challenge training. Uh, you need to essentially treat these videos uh, as if it's as if you're learning how to drive, like it, as, it, as if it's a manual, as if it's a test, essentially. Because the thing is, we're learning a new skill. It's not hard, but it's simple. But there's things you might not remember. And so a lot of, a lot of the things that you might want to know uh, it might be in a video you watch once. But then again, you watch it again, you might catch that thing that you were trying to go ahead and go, uh, uh, recollect to uh, when you're trying to place an ad or whatever it may be. So treat the training as if it's uh, your best friend. You're not going to hang out with your best friend once. You're not going to hang out with them twice. You're going to see him over periods of time as long as you guys are friends and you guys are cool, essentially. But all just treat the training like as if it's your best friend. You're going to hang out with your best friend once, and you're going you're gonna to hang out with him again, so on and so forth. So treat the training just like that because the thing is a lot of these jewels are in this training. A lot of these jewels are there. And like I said, like Econ Rob said, he's like, like, this is the life of an entrepreneur. We have to be resourceful on our own, essentially, just as much as we can rely on the group. So kind of hold yourself accountable just like you hold us accountable. So number one, be precise in your questions. Number two, uh, uh, go ahead and watch those trainings, essentially, as if, you know, you're going to go ahead and hang out with them every single day. Or whatever it may be. So yeah, a lot, lot, lot of those questions are answered in those trainings, and I know, you know, uh, reality is, yeah, there's, there's, we're on day 46 now. There's a, there's a lot of information there, mm -hmm. and we get that. Um, but trying, if, if you skip stuff, you're, you're just, you're just gonna miss out on some really, really valuable training. Those of you that have been around this industry know that the stuff that's being discussed um, on these lives for the last 46 days, you can't. You'd pay thousands and thousands of dollars to get this information um, from most of the gurus out in in the market right now. So it's it's incredibly valuable. So don't don't you know don't take that for granted. Just go in and watch those videos. It's going to be really helpful. Um, Alejandro, um, you had asked about scaling up an ad. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you understood what I was saying there. So um, if not, let us know. But hopefully, we answered that question for you. Um, we're going to start, I might, I might do one or two more questions yeah, so because we have, got, uh, hello everyone. Oh. I have one here about the targeting. Yeah. Yes. So I think that the targeting is the, the key point here in the ads. So maybe you can ask these two questions when you are going to target some product. What does your product best do? What does it, what does it best serve and where can you find them? Yeah, so with that, those three, maybe you know, uh, if you go to, I don't know, to go more deep in the use of the product, who will use this product, uh, Facebook, Facebook, famous people that maybe have this product, uh, yeah. stores, tournaments, uh, so go yeah. deep in this, maybe to go yeah. to the interest. No, I agree, and that, I think that was directed towards Tim, um, Tim Herman. Uh, and and Fabian just gave you like some really really valuable information. It sounds pretty basic, but you know what what, what does a product do? Who does it best serve? And where can you find those people? 
Um, and you're asking about the fidget spinners, and I don't want to get into a bunch of detail about specific targeting on any one product, but you really want to think about who is the person that's using that? What is the purpose of the product and who would be using it? And from there, your brain will start to like think about what types of groups you might want to go after, what interests you want to target. Um, and when you start thinking about products that way, um, some things are obvious. You know, if you've got like a, if you've got a dog product, well, then you go to a dog owner, right? But that's, you know, everybody talks about cats and dogs, but they're a little bit easier to talk about. Well, when you've got products that are a little bit more complex than that, um, you need to think about what, what, what does a product do and who does it serve? And, you know, where do those people hang out? What types of interests do they have? What types of groups do they hang out in? What websites are they visiting? Um, that's the other thing too, but, you know, people, we, we, we don't, we haven't talked a little bit much about that, but knowing what websites you would go to, I mean, you can search some of that stuff. Those websites will have fan pages a lot of times. So you can go in, once you know certain websites that you think people might go to, now you can search those things in, in Facebook as well. So um, those are some of the questions you're going to want to, you want to ask yourself when you're going through your products um, and understand, you know, it'll help you understand your, your what, what we call an avatar better with your, your target um, customer. Uh, so let's see. What's up, Jonah? <laughs> Happy to have you on. Um, yes, Alejandro, Fabian is from Colombia. His accent Colombia is awesome. Here, man. <laughs> yes. So look, he's even got the flag. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. All right. I think we, uh, yeah, Mike, sorry about that. It, 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 has, it has been cutting out a number of times a day. I'm not sure if that's a network issue, a Facebook issue. I don't know what it is, so I apologize for that. Um, hopefully when it comes back, uh, when the recording comes out, we won't see, you guys won't see that stuff. Um, Can we be the last one? So Yeah, Fabian's going to do one more, and then we're going to wrap up. Guys, also, too, I, we know we didn't get to every single question here, so sorry about that. There were actually quite a few questions, which is fantastic. Um, we'll do this again. Um, but if you've got questions that didn't get answered here, feel free to put them in the group. But, but like Sean was saying, um, you know, some of the things that we'd like to see in there is make sure that the question is something that provides value to everybody. Um, and, you know, make sure that you you're, keep it as short and specific as possible. So, you know, some, sometimes we'll get questions in there that will be paragraphs long. And we just, it's hard to read through all that. We're getting hundreds of posts a day. Um, and and stay positive. That's always another good one too. But uh, and then also too, leverage the resources, leverage those videos. Um, there's there's cheat sheets in there. Uh, read through that stuff. There's a lot of lot of information um, that's already covered that we get questions on. So we're happy to help, and that's what we're here for. Um, but but some of this stuff is is already in there too. So anyway, thank yeah, you. No more question I before we wrap up. Yeah, this is mindset. Everything is mindset. So mindset. So maybe. Yeah, doing, you know, don't stay like Roberto said before. Just do a thing, do do things, and don't analyze and paralyze. So just yeah. do it. Analysis. That's paralysis. all. Analysis paralysis. Yeah. Jump so. in there. Don't fall in love with a particular product. There's some products out there you're just going to you want them to sell. Um, make sure you're not holding on to them too long. Look for something else when you do your analysis. Um, same thing. You got. You have to do multiple ads. You got to test. We have so many people that you know are too scared to run more than you know one or two ads. You got to keep testing. You got to keep running ads. You're going to get better at it. Um, your target selection is going to get better as you choose audiences. You're going to start thinking in different ways uh, as you do more and more. You have to do it. Even if you're running a three dollar ad, you got to practice. If you only have one product in your store and you're you're scared about your store not looking perfect. Um, most people are just going to see the, that one product when they go to your store. So don't get stuck by thinking your store has to be perfect. You got to run the ads. You got to have practice at it. Uh, I learn something new every day with every ad that I run. So keep doing it. Cool. Okay. Awesome guys. Um, yeah, thank you all too as well. I, there's a lot of thank you guys lot of stuff in here a lot. Of a lot of thank yous and everything. We, we appreciate you guys a lot, yeah, and we're you. happy to be here to help. So Yeah, we're here to help. Yeah, let us know. And, uh, That's precise question. <laughs> yes, I already reiterated that for you. So you. Awesome, guys. Uh, thanks for coming, and we'll see you on the next live. Take care. Yeah.